spoiler alert, is going to be the best shortstop in the MLB next year. He is my number one. Now, nah, oh my word, you have him as number one. Yo, what is going on, guys? For the returners, welcome back to the channel. For the new guys, this is the Pesky Poll Podcast. Two guys that have known each other since we were nine years old who love the game and especially love our Boston Red Sox. Here to talk about that and a little bit around the MLB. This is my friend Ari. I'm Robert. Ari, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm not doing too bad. Once again, this is day whatever of saying, God damn, we need a haircut. So, without further ado, we have let's... all this like this like lettuce business back there, and I'm just like slowly trimming it. And I'm like, I, I can't, I can't wait any longer. Nope. I need to chop it. Your, your boy gets a haircut with the hairstyle I do. I get a haircut about once a month, and it's been eight weeks. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's been a- <laughs> the essential business. All right, I'm starting to petition. A while. All right, yeah. so we got two things on the agenda for this podcast. The first being we're going to talk about what happened to the Red Sox and what punishment or lack thereof they were given. And second, we're going to go into our top 15, 16 for me because I have a tie for 15th, top 15 shortstops. So let's get right into it. All right, what were the punishments that the Red Sox were given? Not much. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. It took them this long to figure out, well, we don't need to, you know, really uh, give them much of a punishment. But I don't know, man. It, 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 this was kind of a weird thing because they said they were going to come out with this in February. And what is this, April? And now they're yeah. coming out. And it's like, well, we got to say something. They used every um, excuse. Yeah, basically. And so, yeah, let me just quick pull up what the official uh, thing was. I remember um, Alex Cora got a little bit of suspension, but that was only for his time with the Astros. Um, the guy who controlled the camera, I believe it was, is not allowed with the team through the 2020 playoffs and cannot keep, do that same job until 2022 season. And then they lost a second round pick. I believe those were the three things. Here it is. Um Major League Baseball suspended Red Sox video replay system operator J.T. Watkins without pay through the 2020 postseason and stripped this team of its second round draft pick this year after completing its investigation. Um, yeah, Core doesn't get anything extra, which is nice. But um, yeah, I mm-hmm. was honestly, when I saw that that came out, I honestly said to myself, is this it? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I was not surprised because there's very little evidence that they could yeah. bring up on. So having this punishment, I'd say, is just and fair. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. It's like it almost looked like they were trying to figure out, they were trying to dig up some more dirt, and they couldn't find anything. So it's like, well, we got to, you know, put something out. So yeah, something, yeah. That's that's what it was like. It was like it was like grasping at straws. Almost yeah. What I thought. Yeah, definitely. You know, it was it was it was stupid, and it shouldn't have lasted this long. It was proven now, that they. Some things wrong, and it was Cora probably bringing his in his ideas from Houston. So they did some stuff wrong, but definitely not enough to warrant any sort of punishment, even close to what the Astros got. Yeah. Um. Question: Should Alex mm-hmm. Cora be rehired as the Red Sox manager? I'm basing it strictly off of performance last season. No. Mm-hmm. You know that team really? exceedingly underperformed You're really me, no we lost a lot of key pieces over the um over the off season after they won yeah. the world series but for that team with mookie with chris sale with a decent david price with a star studded top five mvp placing left side of the infield in bogart's endeavors that team along with a solid supporting um outfield with Mookie, J.D. Martinez, Andrew Benatendi, and my boy Jackie Bradley Jr.? That can't make playoffs? Yeah, I don't know. Feels in a walk-off to end the season? No. You know, there were, there were some games that were terribly called and some terrible judgments on pitching rotations because of Alex Cora. 
And because but of also, that, I don't think, yeah. 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 No, I mean, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, he pulled, no, he didn't, well, yeah, he was the proponent for the whole pitchers pitching less in spring training in 2018, and it worked perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. And I think he just figured out, I mean, it being his second year of coaching, that you can't do that two years in a row. <laughs> and you see what that did. Um, so I think that I probably, I don't know. My question is, if you're not going to sign him, then who do you have? Like, you can't have Renicky. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't feel comfortable having Renicky be the bench coach. He's a great guy. Um, he's a great coach, but I don't think. Mm-hmm. I, don't I definitely know. need some more research on the coaches to see who I would like to fit into this Red Sox scheme. Because that's one place where I'm lacking is I don't do a lot of research on the coaches. So I probably should do a little more of that. Jason Veritek. <laughs> yes. Jason Veritek yes. should be our coach. Or Pedroia. Yeah. Can, can Pedroia play? Even if he's still under, under contract, can he still, you know, coach? I mean, there have been player coaches before. Why well, can't we bring it back? Yeah, I know. Especially with Pedroia. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into this. All right. So our top 15. Before we get any comments on people who have watched our videos before, yes, we actually have 15 players each. Double checked. <laughs> All right. So let's get right into it. All right. 15. What do we got? I have Willie Adamas. He's okay. not. He's he's there for a reason. Uh, 252 batting average, 317 on base percentage, 970 fielding. Kind of middle of the road, you know. Um, mm-hmm. OBP Still probably solid. could be higher. So, but solid, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So for me, I had a tie between two guys for 15th. Corey Seager was my main guy who was 15. But I had to give a shout out to the Cardinals shortstop, Paul DeJong, because he had the second highest fielding percentage of everybody with a 99% fielding percentage. That's nuts. 99% fielding. Definitely a guy you can trust. Like I said, he only bats 233 in a 444 slugging. So he's not the best at the plate. But we were talking about this before we hit record is that our shortstops need to be excellent fielders. They're the captain of the team when they're out in the field. So that's why, for me, I was looking more into fielding than I would most of the other positions besides second base. Yeah. um, Why'd you have Corey Seager? Why'd I have Corey Seager? Yeah. Um, 3.3 war, 272 batting average, 43 slugging, and a 968. So same with your guy. Who'd you say again? I forget. Uh, Adamas. Adamas, yeah, yeah, same kind of thing. It's just an all-around kind of guy. Really didn't do crazy numbers. Nothing like we're going to see from our top five. Yeah. But I'd say definitely still worthy of taking that spot. And there was no one else that I found around him besides maybe. Actually, Kevin Newman did have a good year. Who is Kevin so, Newman? <laughs> Kevin Newman is the Pirates oh, shortstop. Geez. And like, like, we, like we all know, no one knows a lot about the Pirates. But Pirates don't know a lot about the Pirates. Sorry, Pirates fans. Yeah. You have Josh Bell. Josh Bell's good. Yeah, he plays all around the infield. It's his second, really first true year in the um, MLB. Uh, bat 308 and a 446 slugging. You know, this guy, very solid year for the Pirates just last year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Very, very solid. All right, so, so interestingly 14. enough... Oh, sorry, were you going to go? Do you have anything else? Oh, you go. Okay. Interestingly enough, my 15th, 14th, is Paul DeYoung. And so, yeah, 233 batting average, not great. 318 on base, eh, not terrible. It's, mm-hmm. you know, but it, you're right, yeah. his fielding, I, was, I immediately was drawn to that. I was like, holy <laughs> cow. A, a JBJ of the shortstop, you could say. Yeah, you know. and it's funny because I've watched so many like clips of stuff, and I never realized it until rewatching it, and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, look, and not to mention a five point three WAR for the for the Cardinals. Yeah, team impact absolutely there. I mean, he's got a better WAR than some of my guys on my top five. Like, mm. interesting. Kind of weird to say, but true. All right. 
my four team, taking it back to the state of your favorite football team. For those who don't know, Ari is a Texas fan. He is depressed. I am listen. very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about the Texans. They right, did this is a, pretty like half decently, so I'm, I'm a little bit excited. Elvis Andrews. So if we look at his stats, 2.0 war, so team impact wasn't necessarily there. But a 275, 393, and 978. You could have switched around to Jean, Seeger, Andrews, and Newman how you please. If you were to say Newman was 14th on your list, no complaints from me. But he saw it all Andrews around. Andrews completely went over my radar. I, well, not completely. I thought about him, but I didn't really. I was kind of, I'm kind of looking at like younger guys, interestingly enough. Mm-hmm. Looking There's back so at my list now. Yeah. That are emerging as short stops. It's, actually, it's pretty crazy to see. Yeah, definitely. So my number 13 is Jose Iglesias. Jose Iglesias. A once Red Sox and now. <laughs> What is he with the Orioles now? Um, I have no idea at this point. Yeah, I was surprised, honestly. Played with Cincinnati last year. Cincinnati. These are his numbers 287 batting average, 320. No, sorry. Hold up. Sorry. 318 on base percentage and 980 fielding. This guy, don't sleep on Jose Iglesias. I mean, how old is he now? I don't know, man. He's. Probably around, um, oh, so what he was traded in 2013, right? Yeah, he's been the guy that's been around the league. He has been. He was with, with, what he was traded to Detroit, right? Yeah, Detroit. He was, sorry, just going back through the, 21. What? Nope, 30. Sorry. He debuted when he was 21. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like he was he actually debuted with the Red Sox when he was four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he's been he's been around the league for a hot minute. Yeah. So you know. All right. But, but he just kind of caught my eye. So that was interesting. What are we at? 13. So for me, these are two guys that are on the left side of the infield that are going to have a strong future together. Two extremely young guys at third base and shortstop. And I wonder how they're going to grow together. Right? We're going up north. We're going to the Blue Jays. Bo Bichette. All right, he was one of the guys that was higher up. The list that I was looking at to base mine off of. But after looking at his stats, the reason I have him so low, he only played 46 games. Extremely, yeah, extremely that's true. small sample size to base myself off of. But in that 46 games, he still did amazing. 311 mm-hmm. hitter, 571 slugging with a respectable 96% fielding. Yeah. Wasn't anything great, the fielding wise, but hitting, this guy's going to be able to rake for years to come. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the only reason I had him so far down low. Was because of his slugging percent, or was because of the games played. And honestly, if you look at these, um, if you look at our list, the majority of these guys didn't play a full season. Yeah. So, and I didn't take that into consideration. I just looked at, at their numbers. So, um, yeah. What I mean, are we at? Twelve now. Yeah, I. That's why I did it. Was mm-hmm. just if. Like, he only played 46 games. I didn't look yeah. a lot in both Bichette's year last year. But if he had a stretch of 11, 12 games where he went off and he had, yeah. like, a 500 batting average and, like, a 600 slugging, right, those are going to skew his numbers insane. Oh, and, yeah. And, like, if he played a full season, who knows what he, he would do, you know? I, I still um, think he averaged around those numbers, but I think he just would have needed to prove it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it probably would have, like, plateaued a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Numero 12. Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario. Uh, going to the Mets. Pretty young guy. Uh, batting average at 287. OBP was 323. His fielding was 968. So mm. not, um, not half bad. But yeah, he, um, 
definitely one of those younger guys and definitely interesting to see mm-hmm. what his uh, future will hold in the MLB. So here's the thing. You have Ahmed Rosario at number 12. Yeah. Right? He didn't make my top 15. But if we look at a guy who just was outside my top 15, like Kevin Newman, mm-hmm. Kevin Newman beats him in literally every category. In a war, batting average, slugging, and fielding. How old's Kevin Newman? Kevin Newman, we were just saying how he was only in his second year, so I'm going to assume 22, 23, somewhere around there. Kevin Newman is 26. Well. 26, <laughs> and Rosario is 24. Mm-hmm. Right? Does that sound right? Yeah. Sounds right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Close enough. Close. Um, so I can definitely see where you're coming from. Clearly, both of those guys flew off of over each other's radars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, because like some guys on here, like mm-hmm. Ahmed Rosario, Kevin Newman, Didi Gregorius, uh, Scott Kingery, and Nico Homer, I think that's how you pronounce his name, were guys I definitely took a look at. Yeah, Nico only played 20 games. So once I saw that, I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. But you have Those are some guys I was looking at. But all honorable mentions, still great, oh, yeah. great features. Definitely. All right, number 12. We're going over to Baltimore, getting the one positive thing out of Baltimore since Machado left. Jonathan VR. Now, he had a definitely solid season last year. He played all games, played 162 games because, you know, who's going to take his spot? Four, yeah. <laughs> four, four, 274, 453 with a nine, the 957 fielding. So once again, one of those guys where everything's about average. But if you think about it, he's got crazy speed. Mm-hmm. This year, I believe he's going to be able to take that next step because Jonathan Bigar is still a younger guy. He's going to be yeah. able to take that next step and be able to provide something solid for the Orioles so they can potentially have a 40 win season. So I just saw that he's not with the Orioles anymore. He's with the Marlins. When did that happen? It was in the off season. He, they uh, let him like go as free agency. Um, oh. And, but I mean, he was with the Orioles and he was like, you know, pr- pretty crazy. Good. Uh, I never, you know, like, like I, I said, Iglesias see. is their, uh, is a new shortstop, which is kind of crazy to like think about. Oh, yeah, no, well, I just realized that too. Gross. I feel bad for him. I know. Going from one bad team to the other. Well, no, I no, no. The, no. the Mar- Marlins are better than the Orioles. We can agree on that. Yeah, I think I, I yeah. choose a place to go to. As much as I hate to be under Derek Jeter, trust the Marlins more than the Orioles. Yeah. All right. My number eleven, and I put him kind of low. I think we're Honestly, the same guy. I kind of don't even kind of don't even know. Probably because of his fielding, Tim Anderson. Eh, that's not low. That's his not batting low. average and OBP was pretty crazy. Three thirty five yeah. batting average, which boggled my mind. I was like, "Holy cow!" Um, pretty crazy. Three fifty seven OBP and nine fifty one fielding. So he's definitely no. probably could be more of a third baseman if Moncada or. Yeah, wait, hold up. Moncada plays second mm-hmm. base. Mm-mm. But he probably can play. He's going third? Oh, he guys. plays third. Yeah. So he they can definitely more a... some patients where they just switch guys in and out. Yeah. Tim Anderson, like I said, you didn't you didn't have them too low. I didn't I only have him a couple spots up. So it's, yeah. it's nothing crazy. But I thought the name you were gonna say, we were gonna put a little asterisk next to. Oh no. We're going. We're going Carlos Correa at number 11. The main reason, uh, he's, he's an amazing, amazing fielder. I will yeah. give that to him. Yeah. 99.3 fielding percentage with having 273 chances to get somebody out and you only make two errors. That's insane. And the numbers of 279 and 568, you can't, you can't teach raw power and you can't cheat it. So I understand that, but that that batting average is definitely going to go down to mm-hmm. probably about 260, 250 
Yeah. And that slugging, because of that, is probably going to go down to like a 530, 520. So mm-hmm. you're taking away a lot. That's why I had him lower. Yeah. Yeah. So my number 10, we already kind of talked about, was Boba Shett. Um, he, like we said, didn't play a ton of games, but definitely showed it with his bat and his glove. So that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And definitely someone to look forward to in the future and stuff. See oh, how we- especially, especially for us Red Sox fans, having to go against them more times a year. Yeah. Uh, we, you got to come down. Because for those who don't know, I go to college in Massachusetts. R is the main guy. We got to meet up sometime. Mm-hmm. We got to go sometime, and we got to go watch a ALE game. Watch a Sox game. Yeah. Or I, I heard Baltimore is a pretty, a really, really pretty park. My mom's been there, and she was like, "You should go there." Oh, Hampton Yards. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. I went. I went to go watch them over spring training when I used to live in Florida. Mm-hmm. Dude, that their even their spring training field is gorgeous. Interesting. Their field or the White Sox? I can't remember that we we watched those two teams face off. But number ten, right? Ten, maybe. Yeah, we're on ten. Yeah. What do you got? Ten. Twins. Jorge Polanco. Uh-oh, okay. What's that? What's that face for? I didn't have him on my list. Ooh. Top. I didn't have him on my list. I didn't have Didi on my list. Didn't have Seager oh. on my list. Um, Didi Gregorius only had a point three WAR. So I hope you don't have him on your list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay. if I put Kevin Pillar on a list, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Jorge Polanco, <coughs> 0.8 war, definitely yeah, had a yeah. huge impact to the Twins, and especially yeah. adding him with him, a running mate like Josh Donaldson, is going to really, really help that team. Yeah. So Jorge Polanco, 295 batting, 485 slugging percentage, with a 96% fielding. Like I said, one of those all-around guys, but definitely still someone you can slide into that 5-6 hole or that 2-3 hole that you can really trust to still get you a home run or a really, really at solid at bat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, number nine for me, we're going to Oakland and Marcus Simeon. Um, definitely someone who... Definitely catches my eye a little bit. Um, 285 batting average, 369 on base percentage, and 981 fielding. So this guy's pretty good. He does well in fantasy, not fantasy, franchise. If you ever do franchise, I've definitely picked him up and he's been pretty crazy, pretty crazy dude. So remember how before we started recording, I yeah. told you there's one guy on my list that you wouldn't necessarily look at. But shot into my top five. Do I want to know? Top five or top ten? I know, but he shot into my top five. All right. R is oblivious. Go. All right. Number nine, Tim Anderson. We already talked about him. I got a couple of his cards, which his baseball cards, which I'm really excited about. But we already talked about him. Solid all around. Really came onto the scene this year. Definitely more of an overconfident kind of guy, in my opinion. And a cocky, sometimes, a cocky. sometimes you need that guy in baseball yeah. to really get the other team's blood boiling and to really make a game that much more dramatic and that much more high intense so that we can watch and have a great time, too. You know, I, I love the guy. I love the guy. So, what are we at? Eight now? Number eight Kansas City's Adalberto Mondesi. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think I, I am. Okay. So, before you say anything about him, all right, okay. he, he was going to be in my top 10. The reason he's not, I could not pronounce his name to save my <laughs> life. That's the only reason I'm, say, I'm staying by it. I was, I was wondering, because I was like, I honestly went and went on to like MLB, the show, and I played a game, and I heard, I was like, okay, got it, cool, we're good, we're good now. <laughs> If, uh, if Matt Veskirchen can say it, anybody can say it. Um, <laughs> yeah, 263 batting average, 291 no. OB. Wait, look at the wrong Wait, guy. Hold up. Shut up. I'm looking at the wrong guy. 
What? I was I I, I tried to correct you, but I was looking at the oh. wrong guy. <laughs> I was like, no, this is right. Shut up, Bobby. <laughs> um, anyways, five sixty three batting average, two ninety one on base percentage, and nine eighty four fielding. Definitely someone who's more defensive player, and um, definitely someone who can run the base base paths pretty well. Uh, I can't speak tonight. Like, like I said, definitely would have made my top 15 just out of respect for the fielding. And uh, the name, you know. But we're not, we're not going to talk about the name, okay? <laughs> I, I, looked, I looked at that name, and I tried to type it into my computer. I couldn't even type it correctly. I, I, had to like, I had to, like, Google try and figure out what the hell I was typing. <laughs> Google Translate this. Oh, yeah. Geez. All right. All right. Number eight. All right. All right. Here we go. We're going, to, we're going to the Bronx a little bit. We're going Gleyber Torres. As much as, please tell me he at least made your list. And you're sad that you had him higher than me. No, I don't have him on my list. <laughs> I don't know why. I was looking at I was looking at some of his stuff, and I was like, he's kind of like I thought in some ways, kind of middle of the road. Um, but apparently, I'm wrong. I don't know. That's just my opinion. The I, I mean, he's thing that got me is he's got pop. He's yeah, got he pop. does definitely. Solid, solid, solid fielder at a 96 percent. But the 535 slugging percentage and the 3.1 war, yeah. definitely with team impact involved in that. I couldn't, I couldn't keep him out. And if you play in New York, you're gonna hit bombs just because of the fielding dimensions. Just because of the fielding, yeah, That's yeah. True. All right, so number seven, I have Carlos Correa. So we kind of talked about him, um, mainly just because of his fielding is why I had him so high. Um, so yeah, that's what yeah, I got. He- He's definitely a great fielder. Like I said, had to bump it down because the asterisk. Number seven. Yeah. Definitely a solid contributor to last year's championship team. Solid, solid contributor. Oh, Ari's not happy about this. I ain't happy. <laughs> we got Trey Turner hitting up number seven. And because of his year last year, I maybe should have considered bringing him up a little bit just because of the end result is different, unlike anybody else's. But 3.3 war, 298 um, batting average, almost a 500 slugging, and a 97% fielder. Like I said, solid all around, but he just has more power than those other guys who are 11, 12, 13, 14 in my list. So because of that raw power, I had to bump him up. Not to mention the fact that he can steal bases like there's no tomorrow. This guy's insane. Like when he when he broke onto the scene, I was like, he's like a better hitter version of Monacy, basically. Um, yeah. So I my should, number. No, go ahead. What were you gonna say? I took I took stolen bases off of my yeah. categories when we did third baseman. I forgot to add him back on. So that's something I should definitely look at, especially for second baseman. Yeah, definitely. My number six. We're going to go to the Cubs. Javier Baez. We can number agree. Six. Number yes. six, Javi Baez. I Wait, like it. We, uh, you and me? That's the first time we've agreed on something that isn't number one. That's really kind of crazy. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I know. Let's, let's cherish this moment. 281 <laughs> batting average, 316 on base percentage. Three, sorry, my bad. 973 fielding. Mm-hmm. So. Especially- same great. as Trey Turner has, where Trey Turner has a 497, Javi has a 531, and Javi Bias has that 6.0 war that really helped his team impact with the Cubs. Number yeah. six is definitely solid for him. Not to mention he's on the cover of MLB. Mm-hmm. That intro the fire. is pretty I crazy. I was like, I haven't seen it yet. I gotta. Just look it up on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Yeah. You're like, Whoa. You gotta wear headphones, because if you don't wear headphones, you don't get the same effect. Mm-hmm. Top five. All Is right. Be gritty. All right, here we go. We're gonna go to California. We're gonna go to San Diego. And we're gonna go meet Mr. Fernando Tatis Jr. He, um... Yeah. He's okay. pretty crazy. I honestly kind of cried when he broke himself and he couldn't play for the rest of the season. I was like, because he was my candidate for the rookie of the year. And, the, and yeah. the NL definitely would have definitely would have made that. 
Um, three seventeen batting average, three seventy nine on base percentage, nine forty four fielding, five ninety like, slugging. Dude has pop. Yeah, and Better you know what's crazy? Fielders. When you have him on the same side of the infield as Machado, Machado. that's pretty crazy. That's gonna it's, be killer. Yeah, it's it's gonna be beautiful to watch, so um, especially Machado. That's yeah. a question though. Especially with having Machado on this long contract, when Tatis hits that contract year, what do we do? You know, because he's, he's like a bet, so you can't just like throw him away. Yeah, because oh, right you know, now, see the Red Sox, the young buck right here is overpowering his max contract teammate. It's not even close. We have no. Machado. Oh, it's not. And an eight? Machado was at like what? Race list. Let me look back. Eight. He was at eight. And we yeah, have ten for me. I mean, I have. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he was moved. Mm-hmm. Machado, if he gets traded, yeah, if there's like if if San Diego pay or like they only have like half of that deal and then they like just kind of ship ship him off somewhere else. I don't know. All right, like I said, remember how I told you there was one guy who didn't seem like a top five player, but when you look at his numbers, you're like, God damn, that's really good. Yeah, Mark see Simeon. Okay, that doesn't yeah, okay. Five yeah. for me because of two things, three things. They One, did. played every game last year. Two, 981 um, fielding percentage with 622 putouts. This guy got tested at shortstop last year and was able to hold his own with a 98%. Finally, his war is an 8 point nine substantially higher than yeah. anybody saw i looked at those numbers and i That's and before crazy. i even got the last like because what on the list i was looking at yeah. he was three seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen he was 13th behind tim anderson i saw those numbers i'm like no way no yeah no he is way. far far better absolutely I top five put him up higher Looking back on it, he's a. But I mean, I mean, one of the, one of those guys where you never look at and say, he he definitely stands out among the yeah. rest. You really have to look into the numbers to see. Wow, yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. All right, number four. We have our hometown Xander Bogarts. That number four. Um, three hundred nine batting average. Probably sound happy with me. <laughs> um, 384 bomb base percentage, 975 fielding percentage. This guy had a career year. This guy is only going to get better. He, we're never going to regret. You can count me on saying this. We will never regret extending Bogarts. Ever. Spoiler alert Xander Bogarts is going to be the best shortstop. In the MLB next year, he is my number one. Now, oh my word, you have him as number one? Like I said before we started recording, I said my one, two, and three. (laughs) If you were to change them interchangeably, I would not be mad at you. It was so hard to figure out the difference between my one through three, but I had to go Bogarts, and I'll explain why once we get to our number one. Number four, I had Tatis Jr., mainly because... Yeah. I would have loved to see what he did with that, with his numbers. He only played 84 games with still a 4.1, um, 4.1 war. If he would have played all um, 162 games, he's an 8.0 war guy. 317, 599, 544. It's, it's insane numbers, especially for yeah. a young buck like him. Yeah. We're at number three now. Yeah. Uh, I had Trey Turner. Just mostly because he's really his bats improving, and we already talked about you know his stats and stuff. So you can you know go you, back. You, if have, you, want. you have him as number yeah. three, correct? Yeah, number yeah. three. Yep. All right. Okay. I I can I can. Twenty six years old, definitely gonna get better. Um, did but, did his impact on a world on a World Series team boost up your ratings on him? Honestly. 
that's not really what I was thinking about. I was looking at like how his careers like spiked, you know, and that's honestly why I have Bogarts at, in the top five, um, and Tatis, even though Tatis's first year was last year, but like, you know, these guys are just gonna skyrocket. Um, yeah. I yeah. don't honestly looking back at my list now, one and two are interchangeable, but um, and I yeah. think I think I think I know. I these have to be your top two. If they're okay. not your top, we're ha- cut the podcast, <laughs> cut the cameras. All right, number three, who yep. should be your number two or number one, Francisco Lindor. Yeah, yeah, five point oh WAR. He's your number two, two, isn't it? All right, five point oh WAR. We'll just because he's yeah. your number two, so two eighty four batting average, five eighteen slugging. Especially for a shortstop that is high numbers yeah. and a ninety-eight percent fielding rating, really, really solid for the Indians, and it's yeah. going to lead the team for years to come. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, where do you have him? Number one, uh, Lindor. Yeah, Lindor. Number three. Number three. Okay, so who's your number two? Number two is your number one in Trevor Story. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll be Trevor interested to see who your number one is. I told you who my number one was. Oh, Bogart's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The reason this was, I sat here for 20 minutes mm-hmm. trying to debate who should be number one, Bogart's story or Lindor. And let me rant for a minute because this is where <laughs> this is where I got my numbers. Okay. All right. Trevor Story had a better war, a better team impact, and especially um, it wasn't by much, six point one to five point nine. But with him only playing, t- with him playing ten less games, it was somewhat noticeable. So I gave Story the advantage there. Batting average, Bogarts had him three hundred nine yeah. to two ninety four. Fielding was pretty insane though. Fielding, they were right next to each other. A nine eighty seven mm-hmm. fielding. Yeah, that's nuts. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Story had fielding. Bogarts and Story were tied, right? Yeah. Bogarts had batting average, and Trevor Story had a war. It was a tie. So I had to sit and be like, (laughs) which do I value more? Yeah. And especially for if I had to think about my prototypical shortstop, I had to think about a guy who was a solid, solid, solid fielder and Mm -hmm. could still get on base for you. But I really need that guy who can get on base. So I really value the batting average. Over the fielding, and I chose Bogarts. Yeah. So, why why story number one? Um, the thing that really jumped out at me was his fielding. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, holy cow, this guy is insane. Especially with um him right next to Arenado, like, yeah, that's a pretty crazy uh team. And like we said, these guys can be flip flopped, like mm-hmm. one through five. I mean, I don't think we're going to have any of those other, um, any, any other position that would do that, that we can yeah. do that. So close. It wasn't even, yeah. it wasn't even funny. So close. But uh, that, it was so hard to figure out. But hopefully second base is a lot easier. And what yeah. I'm going to do is over on the left side of the screen should be my list. Over on the right side of the screen should be Ari's list. If y'all made it this far in the episode, let us know down below whose list was better and what would you change about our list did we forget your hometown boy in the bottom 15 let us know all right so yeah. with that being said are you got anything else you want to talk about not much um no. just yeah have a all good right. have a good quarantine and uh send me send us uh send us some questions and stuff we can kind of get back to you guys and connect with you guys a little more the one, the one um, thing i do want to talk about along along with that yeah. Is if you post a comment or email us or DM us at Pesky Paul Podcast on Instagram, we will answer your question in our next video. So no matter where you send it, if you DM us or comment a question, we will make sure we get to it. And along with that, shameless plug, go follow the Instagram. We post a lot of great stuff there. We should be posting more, Ari. I know. Yeah, it's a little bit. I mean, the end of the semester is a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know. it's been definitely it's been really hard it's, for it's us a with good time. semester and our teachers having that crackhead energy <laughs> of, just, of giving us end of the semester homework, homework on homework on homework. 
It's been nuts. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate every single one of you. We'll see you guys next time. Don't say you get money, boy, you being broke. Did you dash up in my circle? You can